to obtain a valid learner's license which will allow you to drive on any road in South Africa the following rules apply. One must have to pass a standard learner's license test pertaining to the traffic rules, road signs and control of the vehicle one intends to drive. The learner's license is a permit that proves that you have basic knowledge of a motor vehicle and the rules of the road. The learner's license is valid for 24 months and cannot be extended. Different learner's licenses are issued for the various categories of motor vehicle. Code 1. This is for a motorcycle with or without a sidecar, motor tricycle or quadricycle. You must be 16 years or older on the date of the test in order to apply, only if the motorcycle's engine does not exceed 125 cc. If the motor vehicle exceeds 125 cc, then you must be 18 years or older. Code 2. This is for a motor vehicle, including a minibus, bus or goods vehicle, with a gross vehicle mass not exceeding 3,500 kg. You must be 17 years or older on the date of the test in order to apply. Code 3. This is for a motor vehicle with a gross vehicle mass exceeding 1,500 kg. You must be 18 years or older on the date of the test in order to apply. Procedure to apply for a learner's license test. Go to the nearest driving licensing testing center to book a test date and confirm the booking. Take the following with you, 1. An identity document, 2. Two identical black and white or color ID photographs, before you have photographs taken you should confirm with the driver's license testing center how many photos they require. 3. A booking fee, about 150 rand. This amount may vary in different provinces. 4. Proof of postal or residential address, example, a utility account. If the utility account is not in your name, the of owner of the account must make an affidavit declaring that you live at the address, and a utility account must be attached to the affidavit. 5. If you stay at an informal settlement, you must bring a letter with an official date stamp from the ward councillor, confirming your postal and residential address. Before we look at some of the rules of the road and the signs, let's first look at an example of the different road surface markings found on our roads in South Africa. Like all rules of the road, road surface markings must be obeyed. Failure to do so will result in prosecution. Road surface markings are painted on the road with white, yellow or red paint. The road surface markings are as follows. The center line or jagged white line. The center line indicates the center of the roadway. This acts as a guide to motorists so as not to cross over in the path of oncoming traffic. One of the most important rules of the road is that drivers must keep to the left of the road. If it is safe, one may cross over the lines. Now that we have a look at some of the road surface marking, we can have a look at some of the rules of the road. The most important rule of the road is to keep left at all times. The primary rule of the road is keep left, pass right. This general rule means that one should keep to the left-hand side of the road, even on multi-lane roads and dual carriageway freeways, where there may be two or more traffic lanes. You should move over to the right-hand side lane only when you want to pass lower traffic ahead of you. After overtaking, return to the left lane as soon as it is safe to do so. Always remember to signal your intention to change from one lane to another. Speed limits on the road. On urban roads, the speed limit is 60 km per hour. On rural roads, the speed limit is 100 km per hour. On highways, the speed limit is 120 km per hour. Now we can have a look at the various road signs and road surface marking found on our road. The regulatory sign. Control signs. Control signs come in a variety of shape and sizes. They are red and white in color. Except the GO sign. This sign is yellow in color. These signs control the flow of traffic and must be obeyed. Example of a control sign. The stop sign. Found on any road mainly at intersections, railway crossings and scholar patrols. The purpose of this sign is to notify drivers that they must come to a complete stop and make sure the intersection is safely clear of vehicles and pedestrians before continuing past the sign. Bring your vehicle to a stop behind the stop line. If there is no stop sign, the front of the vehicle must come to a stand still in line with the stop sign. At a three or four way stop you may not move off before all the other vehicles which stop before you have moved off. Demand signs. Demand signs enforce minimal restrictions and compel you to take certain actions. They are round in shape and have a blue background with a thin white border. Prohibition signs. Prohibition signs enforce maximum restrictions and tell you what you may not do. They are round in shape with a white background, a red border and black text. Most prohibition signs are identified by having a red line through it to indicate a restriction. These are not the case in some prohibition signs. Reservation signs. Reservation signs are rectangular in shape with a blue background and a white border. These signs indicate the reservation for certain vehicles. 
These vehicles are symbolized with a specific vehicle on the sign to indicate which vehicle can use a specific part of the road ahead. No other vehicles are allowed to use this part of the road. The signs with the letter P are for parking only and the R are reserved for specific vehicles which could use that part of the road. Comprehensive signs. Comprehensive signs advise that you are about to enter a road or an area which is governed by a comprehensive set of rules which must be obeyed. They are rectangular in shape and are on a blue background with a red border. Selective restriction signs. Selective restriction signs are also known as secondary signs. These signs are always placed below a regulatory sign to indicate that the regulatory sign applies to certain hours or conditions and only to certain road users. When these signs are placed together on the road, the sign is referred to as a combination sign. The restriction signs. Regulatory signs will become de restrictive signs when a large X is placed over it. It means that the regulatory sign no longer applies. Signals. These signal signs are usually traffic signals or robots, hand signals, flashing lights on roads or police officers up ahead to redirect the traffic. These signs must also be obeyed. These signs also control the movement and flow of traffic. Example of a traffic signal. Traffic lights. Traffic lights, traffic signals, stoplights or robots, as they are known in South Africa, are signaling devices positioned at road intersections, pedestrian crossings, and other locations to control flows of traffic by regulating traffic coming from different directions. Traffic lights follow a universal color code which alternates the right-of-way accorded to users with a sequence of illuminating lamps or LEDs of three standard colors. The green light allows traffic to proceed in the direction denoted if it is safe to do so and there is room on the other side of the intersection. The amber light, also known as orange light or yellow light, warns that the signal is about to change to red. The red light prohibits any traffic from proceeding. A flashing red indication requires traffic to stop and then proceed when safe. Warning signs. Warning signs are triangular in shape with a white background and a red border. They warn you of a change on the road ahead or of a possible hazard ahead on the road. Chevrons also fall in the warning signs category. Warning signs are rectangular or square in shape with a white background and black and red symbols. The warning signs are divided into three categories. Road layout signs. This sign warns you of the layout of the road ahead. Direction of movement signs. This sign warns you in advance about the direction of the flow of traffic ahead. Symbolic signs. This sign warns you in advance about a hazard or possible hazard on the road or next to the road ahead. This is indicated by a symbol on the sign. Hazard marker signs. Hazard marker signs are placed nearby a hazard or obstruction on the road. This sign is to warn you to be vigilant as there might be an obstruction on the road ahead. Example of a warning sign. Sharp curve ahead. The sharp curve ahead sign falls into the warning sign category of traffic signs. These types of road signs communicate upcoming conditions in the roadway that could present hazards. The sharp curve ahead sign means that the road you are traveling on turns sharply in the direction indicated by the arrow on the sign, either to the left or to the right. When you see a sharp turn sign, you should slow down to a safe speed before entering the turn. Be cautious of traffic moving in the opposite direction. Stay in your lane when going around the corner. Information signs. Information signs provide general information. They are generally rectangular in shape, with the exception of the priority sign which is diamond-shaped. Example of an information sign. The dead end or cul-de-sac. The dead end, also known as a cul-de-sac no through road or no exit road, is a street with only one inlet or outlet. The purpose of this sign is to inform you that the road ahead, or the road to the left or right ends. Dead ends are added to road layouts in urban planning to limit through traffic in residential areas. Do not turn in at such a road unless you are going to a destination in the road that ends. Road markings. Road markings are lines, arrows, words or letters painted on the road's surface. These markings are either white, yellow or red in color. Road markings are divided into three categories. Regulatory markings. They regulate the flow or movement of traffic. Warning markings. They warn you of changes in the road conditions ahead or how the flow of traffic will change. Guidance marking. This gives the driver useful information on the roadway. Some road marking are accompanied by road signs. Guidance signs. 
There are different guidance signs which assist one when driving. Location signs. These signs display the location which you arrived at example, the name of a town, a river or street etc. Direction sign symbols. These direction sign symbols indicate the type of destination being referred to. Route markers. These signs indicate the particular route you are traveling on or indicates the direction you are traveling on to a specific route. Direction signs. These signs are mounted on poles or overhead structure. These signs have a green background. Direction signs indicate the direction to a specific place by means of an arrow. When there are no arrows it indicates that the route on which you are traveling is correct to a specific place. It will display the route name, the town name and the distance to the town. Freeway Direction Signs. These signs are mounted on poles or overhead structure on a freeway. These signs have a blue background. They will indicate the town name which you are traveling to. It will indicate via the white arrows which lane one must proceed into a specific destination. It will also display in meters or kilometers when one must turn to a specific destination. Overhead direction signs. This sign is also only found on the freeway. It is mounted on structures that crosses over both lanes of the freeway. Like the freeway direction sign, it is also always blue in color. The same rules and properties as the freeway direction signs apply to the freeway overhead signs. Tourism signs. Tourism signs have a brown background. They will indicate different tourist areas as well as the distance and when one has to turn off to a specific area. Local direction signs. These signs have a white background. They will inform you of different local places such as markets and local places of interest. Diagrammatic signs. They sketch an overview of how the lanes or travel will change ahead. This is indicated by arrows or symbols on the signs. These signs are normally white in color with different colors diagrams to inform road users what is up ahead. Variable message signs. These signs are used for multiple categories for road signs. Their purpose are to display different messages under different conditions without having to replace road signs. Variable message signs comes in the form of sliding signs, roller blind signs and digital signs etc. Combination signs. Combination signs combine different messages and symbols. These combined signs help people to be aware of more than one danger, hazard or instructions. Having two or more messages on one sign emphasizes the importance of following specific procedures. Temporary road signs. They are temporary signs of other road signs. They have a yellow background. They normally found on any roadside to display a temporary message.